first of all, why did, <laughs> why did you decide to go on to Dragon's Den? So Sorry? we actually, <laughs> Seb, that, that, sorry, that question is such a great question because we didn't decide to go on. We got asked <laughs> to be on, which is something I feel really proud about. Yes, exactly. Because a lot of people are like, you can apply, but obviously us being at the very embryonic stages of the business, we knew that it was always going to be difficult from the numbers and the financial side to go in and be like, right, here's proof of financial for the business. But because we got asked, so we, um, we got a a client of mine called Sarah Jossel. Um, she, I talked to her about it briefly when she was in the clinic and also somebody that's on our team that does kind of the media and PR also knows Sarah Jossel. I talked to her about Parla. And then all of a sudden, Sarah was featured on ITV this morning and asked uh, me and Becky, our other team member, if she could have the product because she wanted to feature it. And before we knew it, we, you know, Paula was on ITV this morning with Holly and Phil, and then like classically, Phil is like swallowing the tablet as a whole, like looking quite gormless. And then, and we're, all, know, everybody... in the, we're, in our, we're all in our surgeries, like completely yeah. freaking out at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, completely. And, you know, we didn't really expect anything of it. Obviously, we had recognition and, um, and you know, the thumbs up, basically, from a beauty editor through our team. And before we knew it, we got a DM, which Simon discovered from a researcher at the BBC called Jess. She works for Dragon's Den. And she said, loved your product. We'd like you guys to come in for the first stage of trials or interviews before you get on the show so what other people don't know is is that you don't just go on the show you know you have to go through different rounds so we had a few rounds to get through before we were finally given the green light that we were going to be on there okay okay yeah I didn't realize that so I mean the experience itself I was just saying to Simon it looked pretty intense um can you talk us through the day how did it go uh sure. well I started the day as always with a run um <laughs> he and, went to bed at 9 30 p.m can we just also put that in there like of course, before? Of course. i'm a parent um but no i mean we uh so the day itself it was up we were up in manchester filmed at granada studios uh rones and i went up the night before and um and they don't tell you when you're going to be on so we knew from the start that we may be there for quite a while this was back in september so still very much within covid times which is why it was only Rona and myself that were allowed to go. Adash wasn't allowed to, um, to be there as well. And uh, so we got to the studio and they immediately split us up. So we're put into these like individual uh, dressing rooms and uh, basically just had to wait for, for hours and hours for our, our slot. Because the problem is, because the recording time is so varied from uh, entrepreneur to entrepreneur, if the dragons don't like the business opportunity, then you're out in 20 minutes. If they really like it, then you could be in there for up to three hours. And obviously we were in there for, for two and a half hours. So um, so you were in we, there, we were split. you were recording for two and a half hours in front we of We were recording for two and a half hours, yeah. Right. Under but the, the other, no breaks, full. The, the, uh, yeah, no, another thing is said, but I want to mention is that before we went on the show, um, we have friends that are entrepreneurs that had also been on the show for other products and I remember speaking to a guy through a friend of mine who was successful a few years ago he had an app called thrift and I remember having a call with him and asking him what the day was like and he said he actually already had told me and Simon well he told me who I then related to Simon about what happens and he's like you are put in this situation where you're waiting around for a few hours which was the which was also the case so not only were we nervous, practiced our pitch to death, but we also had to like wait around for a few hours on top of that, not knowing yeah. when you're gonna go in. So you can imagine, and obviously being COVID times, they separated us. So they put me in one dressing room and Simon into another one. And we we're basically WhatsApping each other, <laughs> even though we were next to each other because of social distancing and isolation. Yeah. So. And then the other thing is, is that you, you're too nervous to eat and you're just constantly thirsty. So it's quite a tense situation. It's almost like they want to make you more nervous than you already are. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so you, you went, you, you got a quite a hard time when you were in there. A lot of questions from what we saw on the TV programme anyway. And you decided, you made quite a bold decision not to go with the investment that was offered. Um, what, what was your reason for refusing? 
as Rona says, we did a lot of pre-work before going into the den. And part of that, um, again, primarily through Rona's uh, good connections, meant that we got in front of some very experienced entrepreneurs uh, who have spent a lot of time in the industry, um, and some of which have even been involved with Dragon's Den in the past. So after giving them our pitch, uh, the feedback that we received from them with regards to our valuation um, and the strength of the business, even as Rona says, in our very embryonic state, we've only been trading for, for six months when we went into the den. Um, but the feedback from them was your valuation is spot on. If anything, it's a little low and um, don't let the dragons push you around. Get this, the, the valuation is fair. So uh, between uh, the three of us, we had decided that we had a certain upper threshold that we were willing to go to. Um, and we weren't willing to sacrifice such a large equity split um, of 30% when we're so young on, because we think that this brand, as Rona says at the end of the show, can really take over the toothpaste world. Um, and we do see a massive, a massive opportunity uh, for, for Parler um, to penetrate that market in a very real way. And we're seeing that already. So although Tej and Deborah were the two dragons that we actually went in there looking for, um, Tej for his experience in the manufacturing of tablets and Deborah for her eco credentials and, and credibility, um, it wasn't for us. And obviously me and Rones had our little chat at the wall and um, and uh, had our had our touring and throwing and um, it certainly wasn't an easy decision, but as I say, we had a um, a very clear objective of what we went in there for, and they didn't deliver on it. And so, in reality, it was a relatively simple outcome. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, the other th the, sorry to interject there, but I think one of the most important things to recognise is is that. I know a lot of people are shocked, including my dad, who I called up and told him what he said. He goes, you've made the mistake, call them and tell them to take you back. I was like, no dad, it doesn't <laughs> work like that. But, but the thing is, is that people get blown away, I think, by the whole thing. It's a dragon. They have connections. They have the ability to get you to places that you can't by yourself. But I think one of the things that I rec recognized during the prep time was talking to entrepreneurs, was recognizing that Dragon's Den puts you on the map, it gives you vis visibility, but it doesn't guarantee that your business is gonna be successful. And actually the success of your business is down to the people that are involved and the structure within the business. So a dragon may get involved, but sometimes they don't even get that involved. So I'd spoken to people, for example, that had investment by certain dragons, but they said they barely saw a dragon afterwards or, you are still pushing the business as you were before. So I think there's a lot of hearsay and the reality of the situation is it doesn't necessarily further your business in the way that you want. And, re and what's really important is, is that Deborah almost reinforces that by saying, you can throw money at any business, but I don't have the credibility those two have, even though two couldn't agree. But, you know, the fact is, is that she was stating that really, you know, there is more to a business than just throwing money at it. So I think for that, that really reinforced that we made the right decision to walk away because we can do it ourselves as well. That's a very good point. I, I spoke to a, a woman who was on Dragon's Den uh, maybe a couple of years ago and she had a toothbrush. Was she a dentist? She wasn't, but she re released the toothbrush and she got investment. Uh, it was Tuka Cinnamon and somebody else. But um, the, she said that she had a meeting with the two of them and that was the last she heard and they all pulled out. So she accepted the investment, but that doesn't even mean that you're going to get, get anything yeah. from the, the uh, yeah. drag. Um, so the TV show was a great marketing opportunity. Even my sister was texting me saying, how can I get hold of these parlor tabs? Um, so what has happened since? Well, craziness. <laughs> the, world, <laughs> the world's exploded. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so we've obviously seen a massive increase in demand. Um, we were doing very well already through our own organic growth. Um, we were already in Boots, um, already in, in lots of other online retailers doing really well on Amazon and that sort of thing. Um, but everywhere is sold out apart from our website. Um, our website, we're down to, our, to very, very low stock levels. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been astronomical, really. I mean, we've done about about four or five months worth of sales in the last week. Um, so it's been uh, crazy. 
We've also had a lot of interest uh, from dental practices, which we already had done, to be fair. We had, a, we had quite a nice spread of dentists who were already stocking parlor in their practices. Um, but that's completely exploded as well. So our team, our small team of six is, is uh, struggling under the, uh, the workload. Uh, and we've had a lot of interest from investors as well um, through LinkedIn and through our, our contacts and our connections. Um, and, and lots of new retailers are also coming coming to us as well. So, yeah, it's all, all good stuff, all very, very positive. Um, but as Rowan says, we're sort of trying to keep our heads screwed on correctly, keep our focus on the brand's mission and, and, and what our objectives are. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, just take the opportunity um, as, a, as a springboard to, to bounce forward from. One thing that wasn't featured on the show, but Simon and I knew that we had to really push on with imminently was Parlour Pro, because Parlour Pro, the release date basically got pushed forward since we mentioned it in Dragon's Den and they took a huge interest in it because it is the only tablet in the world to have our unique formulation and advantages to normal toothpaste, toothpaste tablets. So they really loved it. So we were suddenly under a lot of pressure to be like, right, we've got to make sure that pro production is in full flow and that we can deliver, which we've had a huge interest online as well. So we have a massive um, press day next week, which we're really excited about with, you know, key journalists and influencers who've taken a really big interest in that. So I think we're really excited about that. But as Simon says, it's just staying above it all, you know, all the new orders, all the new interest and making sure that we've got quality control and customer service at the forefront, which is really hard when you suddenly have this like huge rush of people. Sorry, I'm really pleased that it's taken off for you. What are the plans now for the future then? Is it, is it to push Parlour Pro? Is that the next step? Short term plans are we I, I announced this recently that we have a uh, national retailer um, who is stocking us um, at in the hundreds of, of locations around the country um, and that's going live next month. So that's our short term uh, uh, main focus is, is making sure that we uh, we get that uh, off the ground successfully. Uh, and then as Rowan says, Pro is um, has just launched and we're, we're super, super excited about it. I don't know if you've seen the details on it, but uh, as well as having all of our eco claims uh, as with original, it also contains hydroxyapatite, which is incredible for remineralization of the enamel. It also contains potassium citrate, which is incredible for helping to fight sensitivity. But in a complete... Uh, unique world first it also contains vitamin b12 and vitamin e to help support a healthy immune system and there's amazing studies supporting uh, for, uh b12 fortified toothpaste for specifically vegans obviously a lot of our customer base are vegan or they're trying to be more vegan and there's a b12 deficiency associated with that um that requires daily supplementation so we're really excited about that addition um, and we think it's a, it's a whole new wave of um, supplementation within toothpaste that we're very interested in and is quite exciting for us. Do you suggest people swallow it, Parla? No, no, no. So, so the, the blood flow of the mucosa is sufficient that you get absorption of the B12 at the concentration we put it in at, which is the exact concentration based on these studies, uh, absorption of the B12 through the mucosa uh, and it gets converted into uh, the vitamin form in the um, in the bloodstream.